Hier spricht Willi Münzenberg, ein Vertreter der Internationalen Arbeiterhilfe. Ich denke, wir sollten dann noch beginnen. Wir haben viel vor. I think we should start now because over the next few days we have quite a lot to do. Now, on behalf of the organizational team, which is Kasper Basken, Bernhard Beilein, and my name is Uwe Sonnberg. I'd like to welcome you to the first International Willy Mützenberg Congress. Danke. Vielleicht ein bisschen zu früh. Den historischen Bezug, der den Now, the historical context of this conference will be discussed here at this conference. And I just want to say a little bit about that, what has been seen over the last few months. There are some things which are not really surprising. However, they are very important. Tom Strohschneider will probably talk about this later. Now, the one thing is the role of media. Say, for example, when you look at the uh, Greece coverage, we see that there was a lot of media there and now the possibility of alternative media were not always successful uh, to fight against the mainstream media. Now, when we look at the mainstream media, the build, a newspaper, especially when we look at uh, the way they are acting and in, in, when it comes to the refugee debate, then we see that that, the, that has led to Syriza having to make concessions, actually. Now, we as Germans and also the European left, we totally see that, that this is not the failure of the Syriza government, but rather the failure of our government here in Germany. Now, when it comes to the refugee debate, and I don't know how long this will be maintained, now, when we look at the bourgeois bloc, there, will, there are a lot of differentiation when it comes to the refugee topic. One of the main topics of this conference is global solidarity. And this conference is very timely. What is global solidarity? And we, as a foundation, we often ask ourselves, what means a new internationalism? What means an internationalism that does justice to the time that we are living here now? This, of course, has involves questions regarding our um, left party and also the trade unions, because there we deal a lot, or, or we want to forge a transnational and global solidarity. Now, what means transnational solidarity? This is something that we will discuss probably over the time when it comes to the refugee policy or the refugee debate, the discussion is going on, or the discussion that is going on is quite fruitful. We have seen setbacks in the solidarity, of course, and of course there will be many frictions uh, over the next years as well. Now, with regard to the Willy Mützenberg Conference, I wish you all a successful conference. Of course, later on, we'll have to discuss what we are going to do after the conference or with the outcomes of the conference. But this is something that we will do later on. We should really try to see maybe uh, how we can make this conference into a European project. Danke dir, Florian. Also insbesondere Thank you very much, Florian. 
Thank you very much for the perspectives that you have uh, shown. Now, I'd like to ask Tom Sturmstader to come up next. He's the editor of chief of the newspaper Neues Deutschland and also our media partner. Now, on the l last weekend, Tom Sturmstader is the one who actually put together the conference edition, which you have found uh, maybe already in your conference um, documents, or there are also some still at the desk. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Okay, well, let me say a little bit about what can a media designer, a left media designer, say about Willy Münzenberg. Well, he, of course, has to say that there is a tradition. Well, made, uh, Willy Münzenberg was a media mogul and thus a, a colleague. He was a radical left and was a thinker. As a chef editor of the magazine Neues Deutschland, I obviously have to talk about Willy Münzenberg's medias. And I also want to say something a little a bit about Willy Mützenberg and the old and the new Germany. Some of our colleagues at the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, they looked at the newspaper, the magazine of Willy Mützenberg, Die Zukunft, and also thought that maybe we could have something at a European scale like that. So it is a very multifaceted uh, history having to do with contradictions, um, with many contradictions. And um, Münzenberg was often invo invoked in, in many uh, moments. In 1946, when the Zukunft was founded, until the uh, 2nd of October 1990, that was when the old history ended, uh, Willy Münzenberg appears, his name appears in our archives 48 times uh, in this time span, between 1946 and 1990. He's uh, described as one of the most active uh, members of the uh, German Communist Party, uh, just to name one of his duties. And the first article is from 1952 in our archives. And uh, comrades that uh, were uh, a part of the uh, um, uh, of a trial uh, and Münzenberg is described as a traitor. Uh, after that time, he doesn't appear in, in our uh, archives anymore. Uh, only, um, he's only mentioned a couple of times um, as someone who played, a, played an important uh, a part of history in the 20s and 30s. But uh, the uh, uh, the scope and uh, the the real the uh, the uh, crucial importance of his of his work was not even mentioned. So his um, uh, workings and his contributions uh, were described as small contributions, small uh, dissident uh, contributions, and uh, until 80, 1988, uh, when the SED published a resolution and that was the first time when they actually acknowledged the work of Münzenberg and that has to do with the contradictions of the history of the SED. Um, in July 1989 they started to publish a biographical series on Münzenberg. So before the end of uh, the GDR, the, the published, the official um, opinion 
uh, could actually approach and approximate itself to the personality and figure of of Münzenberg. So that is that is a reflection of the circumstances of the situation in those times. And that's why I'm delighted to be able to say that at the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, uh, with what we call Perestroika and also the self-liberation of our newspaper, Neues Deutschland, uh, for the first time in the GDR, uh, the um, 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 uh, declaration of uh, Münzenberg when he left the Communist Party and also um, the uh, efforts of the uh, PDS to rehabilitate many of the communist uh, comrades. And that is when um, the workings of Münzenberg uh, came back into the uh, public arena. Uh, later, his declaration when he uh, left the Communist Party was published again, and, and that was um, a very uh, important document uh, when it comes to uh, the um, uh, finding of truth. Um, well, uh, in that sense, hope you all have a wonderful uh, and fruitful conference. Hopefully, we will be able to talk about the timeliness and the actuality of uh, Münzenberg and that this will have an effect and not only here at the conference, but also beyond this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom, for your words. I would like to mention that Tom was also going to contribute on Saturday to this conference. On Saturday at 6 o'clock, he will hold a presentation titled, Let's Say What Is. A collective organizer and propagandist uh, of Willy Münzenberg. And this presentation will be held at the uh, Rosa Luxemburg Salon in these facilities as well. Now, yesterday we also uh, received uh, welcoming remarks from the European Parliament, and these welcoming remarks were written by Gabi Zimmer. She is the um, head of the parliamentary group of the European United Left and Nordic Left. Now, this message will be read out by Matthias Schindler, who is the managing director of the Grundstücksgesellschaft, a company that is offering our, our, its facilities to us. Ladies and gentlemen, guests, I congratulate you to the first International Willy Münzenberg Congress, and I'm delighted to be able to send you for an opening remarks from the European Parliament. When he was alive, Willy Münzenberg was fighting for solidarity, equality, and democracy. Now, these are basic values which the European United Left and Nordic Left are fighting for in the European Parliament. We want a European Parliament Parliament that is socially just and that offers minimum wages that um, are doing just to, uh, that are fighting poverty. We are also fighting for social and ecological uh, standards. What is very important for our work is the close cooperation with social movements, networks, and also the exchange with the civil society actors and NGOs. When it comes to the refugee policy or the financial crisis or the social union or anti-discrimination, I truly believe Willy Münzenberg would have really contributed a lot to the current debate. Now, on the behalf of the European United Nordic Left in the European Parliament, I wish you interesting presentations and also interesting discussions. Kind regards from Gabi Zimmer. Thank you, Matthias Schindler. Thank you very much, Matthias Schindler. I also like to thank uh, Gabi Zimmer for these opening remarks. Weiterhin möchte ich besonders Simon Roche danken vom Kolog. I'd like to thank Simon Roche from the Kolog Münzenberg, who has come from the French Ex of Provence. He has come all the way from there and is accompanied by the author Tanya Schlee. She will hold um, Simon's uh, speech in German. Oui, bonjour à tous. Excusez-moi, je vais vous parler en français. Je ne parle pas allemand, donc j'étais l'organisatrice du colloque international euh, sur Willy Münzenberg en 1992 à Aix-en-Provence. Et inutile de vous dire que je suis très très ému de me trouver ici parmi vous. Et je tiens à remercier beaucoup les organisateurs de ce congrès 
et M. Bayerlein en particulier de m'avoir permis d'être là. Et je confie donc à Tania Schli euh, mon intervention qu'elle a bien voulu traduire en allemand. Merci beaucoup. Willy Münzenberg war nicht nur ein Mann, der Koalitionen zu schaffen versucht hat und dem es ja auch zum Teil... Willy Münzenberg was forging coalitions successfully, but he also forged friendships even after his death. Simon and I are friends of his. And that's why we are here. Our encounter with Münz Willy Münzenberg was the result of many coincidences. I was able to follow him, uh, or I met him throughout my life, without um, really knowing him. And uh, I was very uh, interested. I was I was curious. Uh, I read Weiss, Sperber, and others. So these were um, uh, pinpricks of, of, of light that, that emerged, but uh, no entire um, uh, biography or life. Um, I'm not a historian, but uh, I work as a librarian, and um, I'm very curious. I um, read the PhD of Jean-Michel Bermier, and he described Münzenberg very comprehensively, and I also read about his aberration of Münzenberg. I uh, wrote an article for Impression du Sud, and I entitled this um, article um, in imagined conversation for the uh, freedom and the liberties of Münzenberg. You might think that this is childish or naive, but uh, on a closer look, it's not, this is not the case. I wanted to create curiosity. I wanted uh, answers as well. The readers of the uh, magazine uh, actually had heard about Münzenberg and became uh, very interested. So the editors asked me to write about him. Of course, I could have said no. I could have. Uh, somehow shied away from that um, from that task, but I wanted to raise, rise to the occasion. Um, there was a German-French um, meeting in Strasbourg uh, on Münzenberg. I took my article with me, and I wanted to convince um, at least one or a few historians to help me or actually start working um, on this myself. For example, uh, and, and then this work included giving answers to the questions with regard to the personality of uh, Münzenberg. Uh, Jean-Michel Premier, Barbier, uh, and others uh, actually commissioned or asked me to organize a conference on Münzenberg. They uh, said they would help me and they would give me their contacts as well, so they would help me organize this conference. This organization of the conference uh, took about three years, and uh, the puzzle was um, slowly but surely completed. And in Aix-en-Provence, we had the International uh, Münzenberg Conference, uh, titled Un Encontre. Uh, which could be translated to a man against the grain. The uh, uh, public uh, conference in the library of Mejan uh, also included witnesses. There was a cultural program with uh, cabaret, and we had readings from uh, Peter Weiss, the uh, uh, aesthetics of uh, resistance. The uh, um, conference papers were published in in a publishing house. Uh, later, the publishing house Peter Lang also published the uh, um, the articles, the papers. So we uh, have um, uh, uh, copies of that uh, at the uh, front desk. From so a, a long time has passed since then. Many things have passed that move me. In the 21st century, the world is, uh, is again uh, confronting their demons. The brown uh, uh, pest, uh, Islamist fan uh, fanatism in other uh, countries, History does not repeat itself. Nevertheless, the facts seem familiar to us. And this never again actually dissipated uh, or uh, got lost. There are murders that are being committed, dictators uh, rise to power. Um, do we need uh, such a figure, such as Münzenberg, who forges coalitions of the conscience? We have to see that um, he paid for his work with his life. And this is a conundrum um, that still has not been resolved. Suicide or murder? He had two enemies, Hitler and Stalin. Will we 
uh, know who was responsible for his death one day? That is the question. 1992, Aix-en-Provence uh, was about um, uh, presenting Menzenberg to a public that didn't know much about him. Since then, Many, uh, many books have been published about him. Since 1992, many archives have been opened, and there was a lot of research that has been undertaken. In Bochum, for example, um, they are working on um, digitizing uh, archives about Munzenberg and to make them available on the internet. I'm delighted that we will hear a lot of about the findings and research that has been conducted over the last decades. We want to um, uh, uh, look at um, the, his life and his work in an international context. So this was to say, or give a few reasons why I'm here in Berlin. When I think about Willy Mönchenberg, I'm very moved. Uh, in this sense, thank you very much for this invitation and that I can be here. I hope we'll have a successful conference and uh, interesting encounters and dialogues. Merci. Vielen herzlichen Dank. Uh, thank you very much, Simon Rosh. Es gibt noch eine ganze uh, weitere uh, Reihe, uh, lange Reihe von a number of institutions and uh, supporters who have contributed to the success of this Congress. You will find a list of these contributors in your documents. Now, we, as a Mützenberg Forum, we also have come a long way. And I would just like to give you a few highlights. In the year 2012, the exhibition on the disappearance of Willy Mützenberg was opened. It showed fragmentations of the findings on Willy Mützenberg's disappearance. Now, you are also able to view these findings um, in these facilities. Now, the conference that was subsequently held already made to a topic transnational solidarity networks in the 1920s and also 1930s. And now we also then de uh, decided to continue with this theme on this Congress as well. Now, before this Congress, we had a series of Münzenberg lectures. And in these lectures, we had various uh, authors, historians, and also media designers who uh, held presentations. There were also readings, presentations, and also city tours, as well as film and also theater performances. So if you want to find out a little bit more about this, you can find, you can uh, check the website mützenbergforum.de. Now, since this conference in 2012, several scientific research projects were able to be concluded. Some other research projects were initiated. Now, a very important cooperation partner has been Stefan Berger. He is the director of the Institute for Social Movements in Bochum. Unfortunately, he again is not able to be here with us personally. However, his message will be read out by Kaspar Breskelen. Kaspar Braskein will read out the message. Colleagues, friends, comrades, the Organizational Committee of the First International Willy Mützenberg Congress asked me to hold um, or to send you a message. I really wanted to be here with us today, this time, because I, uh, in 2013, I wasn't able to be there at the Mützenberg conference. Again, a big and important research uh, meeting makes it impossible for me to be here today again. However, I wish the Congress a lot of success in contextualizing and historizing Mützenberg. Now, in my last message, I spoke about how important it is 
to rediscover important historical personalities such as Münzenberg, because such people during the Cold War were completely forgotten. What happened is that they just fell into the vacuum between communist and social democratic tradition buildings that emerged. Now, the close political connection of historiography on communism and social democracy to political parties such as the Social Unity Party in the GDR and the SPD in the Federal Republic of Germany uh, during the Cold War, somehow through this cover of silence around people like Mützenberg. Now, we are well advised to rediscover left political traditions beyond communist and social democratic traditions also in historiography, and also really contextualize their contribution to the enrichment of transnational and international solidarity concepts. Now, the group at the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation who are working on this topic, and also the Center for Contemporary Research in Potsdam, together with the Institute for Social Movements and uh, at the University of Bochum, are really taking correct steps and right steps in the right direction. Now, at this conference, even though we are trying to find alternative political traditions, we should not create new heroes and superwomen and men. What we should rather do is to have a sober and critical look at these alternative political traditions and also at these personalities and try to historiarize them and not shy away from discussing weaknesses and problems. Now, I really hope that at this first International Willy Münzenberg Congress that we not only celebrate Münzenberg, but also subject him to a critical and historical examination. Now, we, as critical scientists, we should be open when it comes to our research uh, results and also be, allow ourselves to be surprised even if these outcomes, research outcomes, are not harmonizing with our political orientation. I truly hope that you will have all together a successful conference. Ich hoffe, dieser Applaus und dieser Dank wird Stefan Berger auch äh, alsbald. Ähm, I hope that Stefan Berger will be, uh, or these applause will also go to Stefan Berger. I now would like to ask Bernhard Beierlein to give us like a quick um, overview of what we actually uh, want to achieve with this conference. Ja, danke sehr, Uwe. Vieles ist ja bereits gesagt worden, auch über die Möglichkeiten. Thank you very much, Uwe. A lot has been said already about the possible perspectives, for example. Let me just very quickly, on behalf of my colleagues of the Organizational Committee, I want to say a few things um, about uh, the procedure before we uh, start with our keynotes and with our first panel. First of all, our aim is to present new findings, to discuss them as well, to take stock, since very important archives has been, have been opened, the so-called archive revolution that is still underway, basically, taking stock but also uh, opening up new perspectives. And Willy Münzenberg is a link here, is a framework. He's a propaganda genius. He's an artist in uh, matters pertaining to revolution. Or he, he has also been described as a diabolic transnational outpost of a totalitarian regime. So whatever the label for Willy Münzenberg is, of course, his tragic death in 1939, we want to uh, uh, look at Willy Münzenberg as a personality, as a figure that could have a, uh, could be a bridge or a link for the 21st century. 
So we will deal with um, a very rich uh, program. We have a very rich program, of course. First of all, we will talk about forms and uh, practices of radical solidarity uh, with a couple of examples. For example, the famine relief for uh, Soviet Russia after the First World War. We will look at the commitment uh, also, among other things, of women uh, in the Spanish Civil War. And of course, new findings um, will also be presented after the opening of the archives. We will look at, we will compare um, um, observations uh, of the media, the press, the uh, film, which is a must, of course. Uh, at a conference dedicated to Münzenberg because he was able to combine sometimes in a very uh, 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 in a very successful way in a very remarkable way media and politics could he as a protagonist could he and could he also be described as a pioneer of multimediality of course, he uh, gives us uh, an idea of how we could envision a cultural international. Uh, we will also deal with um, um, uh, taking stock of the history of anti-fascism, anti-Stalinism, of course. We, um, the long overdue extension of uh, the anti-Stalinist extension of, the, uh, of our notion of anti-fascism. This will be an important part of the conference. At uh, panel six, we will deal with Die Zukunft, the uh, weekly uh, periodical, which dealt with, um, with which synchronized anti-Stalinism and anti-fascism, and was also the last piece in a framework of a uh, quote democratic socialist collection before the start of the uh, midnight of the century in 1939. We want to explore also the humanitarian socialist networks, the concepts for a new Germany, which has been touched upon in a new Europe, and maybe also the last foundation of Münzenberg, the German-French Union. This is followed by a biographical, biographical panel we will ask questions about the collective biographies uh, of global actors, and we also explore the uh, distinct methodological approach that is required here. In the 1930s, uh, emancipation liberation was only uh, could only be thought as a global liberation from fascism and uh, colonialism. In panel eight, we will deal, the most international panel, we will deal with uh, anti-colonial movements in Asia, Africa, and Latin America with uh, panelists from Ecuador, India, Turku, Amsterdam, and uh, Juliana, Slovenia. And they will try to shed light on these global spaces for our conference, these global spaces which Münzenberg, with his supporters, was able in a remarkable way in the interwar, interwar period, interwar period uh, to, to shed some light on. Uh, and let me just mention the most important um, anti-colonial organizations, the League Against Imperialism and for National Independence of which it was a co-founder. And last but not least, we will have a panel which will deal with new findings and interpretations. Simon Roche raised the questions about um, the uh, unresolved circumstances of the death of Willy Münzenberg. And last but not least, we will also deal with the uh, uh, bridges to the tw 21st century, and we will uh, discuss those. And uh, apropos perspectives of action, and uh, just to give you um, an input for our discussion as well, uh, our conference, wouldn't it be a great opportunity to, uh, to strengthen the um, 
Um, the International Willy Münzenberg Forum as a transnational uh, research network, as a forum for the global history of internationalism and transnational solidarity. And the reactualizing of historic memory without uh, creating new heroes, couldn't it be a contribution to the uh, uh, to further renationalize re um, uh, to further the renationalization and the uh, um, the building of new borders uh, in in Europe? Uh, maybe we could uh, contribute to prevent that. As historians, uh, we. Um, are continuing the uh, uh, work, the, the critical work um, of historians, of course. We, uh, on Saturday, in a, um, a panel discussion, in a roundtable discussion, we want to um, uh, start the founding uh, of a forum uh, on an archive uh, on inter of internationalism and um, non-state transnational uh, solidarity organizations. And this will, of course, entail uh, dealing with the documents that uh, Billy Münzenberg has left us at international level. So we want to present them at a new international and interactive platform and make them available for researchers and the public at large at a global level. So this is what we are going to do. Now let me say uh, two more things about global spaces for radical solidarity. So we chose those terms uh, as, uh, as, a as a support. These are support terms that uh, give um, a certain context, but we will continuously challenge these uh, terms. Radical solidarity is, is global, uh, goes beyond, is, is cross-boundary. But maybe there is a fixed uh, core of solidarity. Is it not the unconditional um, defense of freedom and the world collective, wherever these freedoms and rights are being violated, and against whom the oppression and repression is directed? Is this question asked the right way? I'm sure that radical solidarity has no categories. Anti-fascism, anti-colonialism, and anti-racism have to be thought together. together. And at the same time, we have the destruction of the planet, the ecological dimension that is, of course, an integral uh, element of that chain, and the necessary extension, and um, I'm speaking now to the historians um, of the humanities and uh, social sciences, um, look at uh, Stalinism and its uh, influence, its impact on the uh, liberation movements, on the emancipation movements at international level. They can make their contribution here as well. Radical solidarity, by way of conclusion, has to mean that we have to play with open cards. We have to reach out to the public always. That is imperative. And reaching out to the public, remaining in the public, and actually means to be under protection of the global public opinion. That is what Münzenberg, after he left the, com the German Communist Party, that is what he said. He was, his life was in danger um, due to the Stalinist persecution. That is what he did, actually. Let me draw your attention to one fact. Uh, on Saturday, Uwe talked about this as well. There will be a, an enthusiastic, uh, a large a spectacle, a revue. It's called Roter Rummel. 
and we took this term from the Weimar era. We have reading, a reading marathon, and, and we also screen movies that haven't been screened so far. So uh, we tried to put together a very um, uh, interesting program for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bernard. Global spaces for radical solidarity. This is the theme of the Congress. A lot uh, needs to be done or is going to be done during these four days. And really hope that we all are going to have very interesting and exciting four days and that we also have productive discussions and also a productive exchange. Now, we have a team of interpreters from Lingua Transfer who are making it possible for us to uh, exchange our views. They will be here with us for the next four days and also enable our communication. I'd like to thank the interpreters for that.